requires an indictment. Her response this past Sunday to Chris Wallace in an interview when he says that FBI Director Comey said none of the things Hillary told the American people were true says it all. Take a listen. After a long investigation, FBI Director James Comey said none of those things that you told the American public were true. Chris, that's not what I heard Director Comey say, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to, uh, in my view, clarify. Director Comey said that my answers were truthful and what I've said is consistent with what I have told the American people. So the target says the FBI director has characterized her answers to the FBI as truthful. Seriously, Hillary? That's not what the director says. But let's hear it from the director himself. Secretary Clinton said there was nothing marked classified on her emails either sent or received. Was that true? That's not true. The Secretary three, Clinton three, said three, I did three, not three. email any classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. Was that true? There was classified material emailed. Secretary Clinton said she used just one device. Was that true? She used multiple devices during the four years. Uh, of her term as Secretary of State. Secretary Clinton said all work-related emails were returned to the State Department. Was that true? No, we found work-related emails, thousands, that were not returned. Secretary Clinton said neither she nor anyone else deleted work-related emails from her personal account. Was that true? That's a harder one to answer. There's no doubt that there were work-related emails that were removed electronically from the the email system. Secretary Clinton said her lawyers read every one of the emails and were overly inclusive. Did her lawyers read the email content individually? No. So FBI Director Comey, under oath, swears before Congress that Hillary Clinton did not tell the truth. Hillary Clinton lied. Not once, not twice, but more than 10 times. So when the Washington Post, known for its liberal leanings, gives Hillary Clinton four Pinocchios and PolitiFact rates it a pants on fire statement and factcheck.org gives it a false rating, you would think the woman would understand and recognize the error of her ways. You would think that the presidency demands a certain amount of integrity and honesty. George, I cannot tell a lie, Washington and Honest Abe Lincoln are spinning in their graves. So what does the liar-in-chief do now that she's been exposed? She doubles down on the lie and says in yet another interview, quote, as the FBI said, everything that I've said publicly has been consistent and truthful with what I've told them. And yesterday, the crescendo got so loud at the National Hispanic and Black Journalist Conference that she tripled down and said she may have short-circuited. Take a listen to this one. Director Comey had said that my answers in my FBI interview were tr truthful. That's really the bottom line here. And I have said um, during the interview and in many other occasions over the past months uh, that what I told the FBI, which he said was truthful, is consistent with what I have said publicly. So I may have short-circuited it, and for that I, uh, you know, will try to clarify because I think, you know, Chris Wallace and I were probably talking past each other. Hillary, it would have been so easy for you to say, you know, I've already said I made a mistake or I've learned my lesson, but no, not you. Folks, this is a woman who does not know what the truth is. And if her brain short circuits, is she telling us that she needs work done? Or that the work done was no good? Or that the work done didn't work? And they want to call Donald Trump unstable? At least the man says what he thinks and what he believes. You may not like it, but at least he's honest. Give me honest any day of the week. And this is far more serious, and I'll tell you why. Jim Comey swore that Hillary Clinton sent classified emails. 
accordingly. She lied to us. He knew that she sent classified emails. So if the FBI knew that she sent classified emails, did they ask her whether she did? If they did, irrespective of her answer, they would have had to take her out in cuffs. If she said no, that would have been lying to the FBI. And if she said yes, that's admitting that she violated federal criminal statutes. If the FBI already knew she had sent classified information on her private server and they did not ask her if information she on did, her private server, that means that they intentionally did not want to charge Hillary Clinton. Now, folks, Jim Comey was the man in charge who made the decision to prosecute Martha Stewart for lying to the FBI on a case that had nothing to do with national security. Hillary Clinton's case had everything to do with national security and worse, everything to do with the future of this nation. And when Hillary Clinton says, what I told the FBI, which he, Comey, said was truthful, is consistent with what I have said publicly, she is telling us that she repeated the lie that she told us about not sending classified emails when she spoke to the FBI. That means that she lied to the FBI. She is clearly stating that what she told the FBI is what she told us. She lied to us, as per Comey, and now she's telling us she told the FBI the same lie. Jim Comey's hands are now tied. He cannot do the dance anymore about how there was no intent or that he's not sure what negligence means or that it was only recklessness or carelessness or that the statute isn't clear or that no reasonable prosecutor would go forward. Comey, the prosecutor who wasn't in that room in the interview, who didn't use the opportunity to size up a prospective defendant, who didn't use the opportunity to analyze her truthfulness and her body language, the man who didn't even speak to every one of the FBI agents in that room, who quickly made a determination that she did not have the intent, which was not even an element of the crime in the first place, is now caught between a rock and a hard place. Jim Comey, for all his truth saying, has an obligation to his oath and the Constitution. He has an obligation to recognize what this woman has said, not once, not twice, but at least ten times, and what he has said under oath. Jim, you're running with dogs, and you know better than I that when you lie with dogs, expect to get fleas. And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page or Twitter. Hashtag Judge Janine. And with me now, Donald Trump supporter and former Republican presidential candidate, Dr. Ben Carson. All right, Dr. Carson, to be fair here, <laughs> it's not just uh, the lady who had a bad week. Uh, Donald, uh, my friend, as you know, uh, had a bad few days uh, and wasn't ready to endorse Paul Ryan as part of the reason he had some bad days. What changed his mind? Well, you know, he is a man who does think, and he is observant, and uh, he recognized that he was creating a firestorm where one did not need to be created. So, you know, he went back and did the right thing, and that's key. Uh, he also, I think, is, is rapidly coming to the understanding that there's only one way that the Democrats can win, and that is by making Donald Trump the issue. There's also only one way the Republicans can lose, that is by making Donald Trump the issue. I think it is actually coming to him. He's starting to understand it, and I think, and I'm hoping and I'm praying that, uh, that we will see him pivot and really start talking about the issues because there's no way that Hillary and the Democrats can defend the things that are going on. They talk and they say the economy is great and you well, know, we know that it is. But Doctor, Doctor, let me before before you move on, let me ask you this, Donald. And you heard my open. You heard it. Did you hear my open, Doctor? I did. Okay. Yes, it was good. Uh, no, what I was saying was that at least Donald is honest. 
Donald says what he thinks, and that's what catapulted him beyond 16 other seasoned candidates. Now, that, that's a very did, good point. Okay, but is Donald now pivoting so that he says things other than what he thinks? No, no, I think uh, pivoting away from personal issues and toward the issues that affect all Americans. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about pivoting. And, you know, the thing that is really so disappointing is that so many people in America accept the obvious lies of Hillary Clinton. And they say, it's okay. Everybody does it. What does that say about us as a society? What has happened to our sense of morals and values? Well, everything is defined down. Window. Everybody expects it, doctor. But, but what can Donald do? Can Donald stay? Look, you ran for office. I ran for office five times on a very different level. But how do you get Donald Trump to stay on message? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, you know, he is not dense by any stretch of the imagination. He's a smart guy. Of course he is. And he is observing the collateral damage that is being created by taking the bait. And I, I, I don't think people have to keep yelling at him. I, I think he actually is going to get this and recognize that it's up to him not to take the bait. You know, it's something that I learned when I was running. Um, in the beginning, you know, I just thought, just be truthful and everything will be okay. Well, that's, that's not necessarily the case. You have to know how to phrase things in a way that you don't give them additional red meat to play with. All right. Ten points down right now. And we know it's, and I know what you're going to say, it's the economy, it's terrorism, it's security, it's, it's uh, you know, making sure that, that he stays on issue, and he's strong on those points. But, and it's only August. What has he got to do to turn it around? Because there aren't that many weeks left. We've got nine weeks? Well, uh, exactly. First of all, uh, again, I can't emphasize strongly enough, he needs to talk about the things that are concerning to the American people, first and foremost. He also cannot give Hillary a pass. You know, this dishonesty thing, this huh. is huge. I think she's got to be indicted, just, Doctor. You heard what I said in my open. If, if he says that she wasn't truthful and she says uh, that I told the FBI what I told the American public, that means she lied to the FBI. She's got to be indicted. Well, well, I've been saying that all along. You're the first person other than myself I've heard say that. But, yeah, it was consistent. It was a consistent lie. Right. And, uh, you know, it's not acceptable just because it's consistent. A lie is a lie. And it's horrible. And it leads to multiple other things. And how can we ever expect our children to have any values when we take something that is so obvious and we give it a pass? All right. Dr. Ben Carson, I'm going to give you an honorary law degree. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. <laughs> Thank <laughs> All you, All right. And joining me now, a member of the House Foreign Relations Committee, Republican Congressman Lee Zeldin. All right. Good evening, Congressman. I am fascinated with this $400 million uh, ransom by some, uh, the money that went over to uh, Iran that uh, the White House says uh, was not a uh, ransom for the hostages that were released. Now, let me ask you some questions right off the bat, because uh, number one, we sent Swiss francs and euros and not American dollars, and we didn't wire the money. The president said something like, there's no bank to send it to? What, what's the deal with that? Why did we not send American money, or why did we not send uh, wire the money? Well, first off, because this was ransom. Uh, there, you know, the president wants uh, all of us, the administration wants us to believe that this was just a coincidence, that $400 million in cash would be arriving via airlift to Iran at the same exact time as four American hostages being released. So in order for the president, uh, with his White House taxpayer-funded fiction writer, Ben Rhodes, for them to be able to sell this narrative, uh, they need to start coming up with no. other excuses. The first no, one no, is but I'm not asking you that. Work. I'm asking you why. We can get to that later, okay? I mean, I saw the, the movie, what was it, Beyond Enemy Lines? What was the movie where they wait for the other car to come? What movie was that? 
Do you know which movie it was? Well, I'll tell you what. This, it feels like Wag the Dog from well, the late yeah, 90s. Well, no, yeah, the whole, the, the whole administration is Wag the Dog. Uh, but I think uh, there's another movie, uh, Bridge of Spies with Tom Hanks, where they have to wait for the other car before they release a yep. spy. But um, why, why the cash? I, you know, I, that, that's why we need to have a hearing. One of Congre Congress's roles is oversight. Uh, the House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Ed Royce said that once we come back uh, right after Labor Day that we're going to have a hearing on this topic. I would love to see Secretary Kerry come, uh, if it's Secretary Liu, whoever needs to testify on behalf of the administration to explain exactly why this had to happen. Uh, the conversion is leading to more questions that unfortunately are still unanswered. I, I don't have a good answer as to why the administration did it, but they need to account for it. They need to tell us why that was made. You know, you made a statement a couple of days ago to the Daily Signal, and you said the claim that the timing is coincidental is beyond unbelievable. It's clear that one of two possibility applies. Either the president has no idea what he's doing, or he knows exactly what he's doing and is playing for some other team. What did you mean by that? Well, first off, there's a possibility that the president has no idea what he's doing. Uh, if he does know exactly what he's doing, his priorities are completely out of whack. And I've said this time and again with this Iran nuclear deal, prioritizing domestic politics over national security, prioritizing the, dem the Democratic Party over what is best for American foreign policy, prioritizing his own legacy over what's best to keep our country safe, secure, and free. I don't know what team this president plays for. Uh, it, and it, there needs to be an answer. If he does know exactly what he's doing, then his, priori his priorities are completely out of whack. Did he need congressional approval uh, to send this money, or was this already a part of that $1 billion deal that went to Iran? A billion and a half. I still don't know what the number is. Yeah, this is $400 billion plus $1.3 billion of interest. That absolutely no, has to come. $400 million. Plus four, four hundred million right. plus one point three billion, billion, right? That, that he had to come to Congress. I mean, yeah, one point seven billion in total. Right. The the, the Congress appropriates the funds. Uh, the president executes laws. When Congress decides to appropriate funds for a specific purpose, uh, this president can carry out those laws. Uh, but this president is going beyond that. We're, we, there's right now a court case going through the system with regards to Obamacare with the president yep. uh, allocating funding that, he didn't, that wasn't appropriated. Well, he went around uh, he Congress, to too, when he did the deal for Bergdahl, uh, when he did the release of the, uh, the five Taliban guys. Uh, you know, and this is a, obviously a continuing thing with him. What can we expect with the other two hostages, or three, we're not sure, that are being held by Iran? Uh, more payments? Well, that's the problem with the precedent that you said. That's why you don't pay ransom. And even if the left, the far left, whatever part of the left wants to spin this as a coincidence, saying that th this money was owed, it was agreed upon, it's just a coincidence that it was sent at the same exact time, the fact is the precedent ends up resulting in now American hostages. Uh, the precedent ends up resulting in foreigners, allied company, uh, countries. Uh, now those foreigners are also, also hostages. And Iran, the world's largest financer of terror, working to overthrow foreign governments, pledging to wipe Israel off the map, chanting death to America, calling us the great Satan, well, illegally test-firing intercontinental ballistic missiles, this precedent encourages these bad actors to kidnap even more. So what well, do we do about yeah, these two or it three? It puts all of us, yeah, it puts all of us at risk. Congressman Lee Zeldin, thanks so much. And Thank he's you. a Democrat and was an ardent Bernie Sanders supporter, but now he's backing Donald Trump. You'll meet him here later. And next, the path to victory. I analyze the Electoral College and what critical states can swing the election with poster Lee Carter. Justice rolls on in a moment. Don't go away. With the conventions behind us, the race for the White House shifts to the electoral map and deciphering where the candidates can score wins in the pivotal swing states. Republican pollster Lee Carter joins me now with the details. All right, Lee, uh, let's talk about the new number 270, correct? That's right. Okay. So I understand, and maybe we can look at this, there are right now toss-up states, and I understand that there are eight of them. Yeah, I think that 
we've got to look at we've got to look at Pennsylvania, Ohio, Florida specifically, New Hampshire, Nevada, um, and these states are going to be absolutely critical. Minnesota as well. I think that right now, looking at the most recent polls, though, we've got some issues, or at least Donald Trump has some issues. In the last two weeks, he has really lost ground here. It was neck and neck. He had a really good promise, and a lot of these states. And now it's not looking good. Okay. So let's then back up. What yes. happened? They come out of the conventions. They're doing great. They both had yeah. some issues at the convention. Uh, but she had worse issues. The DNC emails again. Bernie Sanders supporters. And now we've got the latest polls show, what, a 10-point uh, difference? Where, uh, it is a 10 I guess it's Fox spread. News poll. Hillary 49, Donald 39. That's right. And I mean, Hillary picked up five points after her convention. I think it's really important, though, that we look at what happened with Donald Trump the last two weeks. This is probably the worst two weeks for any nominee coming out of a convention, yet he had come out, you know, with all odds, saying that he was 55 percent likely to be the next president of the United States when he left Cleveland. Right now, looking at the odds, it's about 75 percent likely that he's not going to be the president, next president. He has had a horrible few weeks. He has gotten off message. He's been defensive. The whole issue where he was in this whole debate with, um, with the Khan family was horrible for him. He lost vets organizations. It made him look bad. It made him look petty. A lot of people were really upset that he didn't endorse Ryan at the time that he had, you know, at the, at the time and what he said about McCain. Obviously, he, he came back and he did endorse them last night. But it's just been a very, very difficult week. And a lot of people have had a hard time saying, making excuses for his behavior over the last two weeks. So what he needs to do now pivot back to his core message. He's got to get back on the economy. He's got to get back on jobs. He's got to get back on terrorism. In the most recent poll, after this whole issue that he's had with, with the Khan family, Hillary and Donald Trump are neck and neck at what Americans think is the most effective president on, on terrorism. This is an issue you that that Donald Trump has owned all the way through. Yeah, he now has owned it. And, and you know what? Given her history and the mess that we're in and the fact that ISIS was created under her, it is stunning. So it's, it's, it was his to lose. But you know what, Lee? We are in August. And uh, and by the way, she didn't have such a Greek herself. The woman is tripled. No. Uh, she's she's tripled down on a lie that the the FBI director said she told the truth. He appeared before Congress and swore that she lied at least ten times. You know, I think that it's a really this, we've got a really really valid point. And the fact that Hillary Clinton got up yesterday and what they're now calling the trifecta lie, where it was the third time that right. she got up there and defended herself and said I didn't lie. Comey was saying that I was you know trustworthy or whatever the <laughs> nonsense was. It 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 just made it worse and now brought attention back to it. It could have gone away. It could have gone to bed. But she did that to herself. And now that's an issue that's come back out. And Donald Trump has an opportunity to come back from a really tough two weeks. He's done it before. He had three horrible weeks, if you remember, after Wisconsin right. um, when he got in that whole thing. And he came back and he could be fine. It's a long time. We have more than 90 days until the election. Mm -hmm. And memory short. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to be moment to moment here. But don't you think that as soon as she had that interview with Chris Wallace and said, <laughs> oh, you know, the FBI director said everything I said was truthful, shouldn't, shouldn't uh, Trump have come out with a commercial like within 24 hours? Yes. I mean, right. he was going the wrong direction. Right. He was spending the time on the wrong issues. Needs to That's work right. on it. Lee Carter, thanks so much for being with us. Anytime. Great to see you. All right. So who had a worse week? Hillary having to answer yet another lie or Donald Trump who gave the boot to a crying baby? I've got the best political panel around standing by. Matt Schlapp and Chris Hahn here to battle it out over a rough few days for both of the candidates for president, as well as that pesky Iran payment. Was it a ransom? Don't go away. Justice rolls on. Less than 95 days until Election Day, and the stakes could not be higher. Now, Hillary Clinton had a bounce in the polls this week after the Democratic, last week after the Democratic National Convention. But after her less than stellar press conference yesterday, she may be back to square one. Let's ask the political panel for the night what they think. Former senior advisor to Senator Schumer, Chris Hahn, and CPAC chairman, Matt Schlapp. All right, guys, I'm going to start with Chris. Now, Chris, uh, I won't let someone who lies clean my house. So why should we let someone who lies go to the White House? Hit it. Well, you know, 
Well, you know, only 4% of the statements rated by PolitiFact of Donald Trump were rated true. I'm so asking you lying. about Hillary. <laughs> Look, Chris, you're going to have enough time to talk about Donald. Let's talk okay. about the fact that Hillary Clinton keeps it, doubling here's down. My, here's, my, here's my comeback on that. Look, bottom line is Hillary needs to say, look, I made a mistake in what I said about those emails. Clearly she did. She Why hasn't gotten there yet. Why is she incapable of doing that, Chris? Politicians are cautious sometimes, and they got to remember that the actual fact of what happened never kills you. It's the drip, 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 drip that does. That's why the con thing was so bad for Trump. He let it drag out for six days, and it destroyed him. This is the this is the kind of thing that he would let have been destroyed. Her lie drip had, out. We're not talking about Trump. Chris. Listen to me. You're going to get your chance. I'm talking about her. The woman lied said. to us. The head of the FBI said she lied to us. And then she comes out and says the head of the FBI said I said the truth. She lied I, to us again. I would not say that she lied, but she was not truthful. I don't know that she oh, was wow. intentional All in right, what she Matt, said. All right, Matt, take it away. Matt, hit you it. Know, this, in this week, we saw Hillary Clinton lie over and over again. She literally, I watched uh, Director Comey's testimony live. He said that she was dishonest in her testimony. He used different words. He said that she did pass on classified information. And the thing we're missing in all this, Judge, is not even just the fact that she passed on classified information. It's that she made all of her email communications vulnerable to everyone. And we'll never know the damage that that caused us. I don't want people to see my personal emails because there's some private things but that are important that need to stay private. This was America's business, and she she was reckless to quote the the FBI director. But you know what? Uh, I don't director. think, Matt, that most people care about that. But I think people do care about the fact that you've got this woman who is incapable of telling the truth, and incapable. then she uses the word short circuit. I mean, I couldn't help but think of right. young Frankenstein and, and she's a lobotomy. Never and she's never really come clean with the American people. She said, oh, I probably shouldn't have used this server. This was a reckless thing to have done by, the, by Director Comey's uh, estimation. And she ought to tell people yeah. it was a serious mistake. And get this beyond her. But you know what, Judge? She can't do it. She's delusional, and she keeps staying in this place where she believes she did nothing wrong. Okay. Now, Chris, Donald yeah. Trump, to be fair, didn't have a good week. Go ahead. Right. Well, look, I mean, this is the thing. It would have been a bad week for Hillary Clinton, but Donald Trump seems to set a dumpster fire every couple of days that are hard to put out. Now, I love you both, and I know it's hard for you to defend him. But remember, this is a guy who's not good at telling the truth, and he's picking fights with a lot of people well, who should be picking fights What do you mean he's not good with. at telling the truth? Now I'm going to fight with you. What okay. do you mean he's not good? What did he lie about? He said that the Clinton. reason he's so popular is because he says what he thinks. This woman doesn't say what she thinks. Everything is her finger to the wind. Or to the well, criminal this, law, the signing about, is a perjury. How about the movie he never saw or the, or the video clip he never saw of the money coming off the plane as Come the on. hostages oh, were being released? he saw that on Fox that News. That doesn't exist. He saw it on Fox News. Oh, he News. did not see it. He, he did saw it on Fox it. News. It was on Fox News. The video. Okay. The the video forget about Donald well, Trump. The one thing he's not is a liar. Politifact, Politifact, He's not Politifact a liar. fact has rated only 4% of his statements as true. Oh, okay. 4%. Okay, good. None of which could get him indicted. Everything this woman lies about could get her indicted. Matt, go That's ahead. Intense That's right. And, and by indictment. the way, the Clintons, the Clintons are still being investigated, and I think that's just going to be a permanent state for the way they do business. And mm -hmm. the fact is this, Donald Trump in these polls, he had a bad week, he had a bad 10 days, and what I think a lot of people, even Trump supporters, or people who are still seriously considering voting for him, they wanted ch to chastise him this week. They wanted to say, look, it's about the yeah. economy, it's about terrorism, it's about a broken Washington, and Hillary Clinton being corrupt and unable to fix these problems. They want him to get back on course. I think these polls are meant to send a clear message to him. He's either going to listen to it or he's not. But the American people have decided that he is not stable, and that's a problem no, for him, no. a big problem. You're wrong. And what if did he you continues say? to go off Who's the rails, not stable? Matt, Donald? Donald Trump. Yeah. This woman and, uh, said you know, she was short circuited <laughs> in her mind. Ju judge, let I me mean, tell you, when this election. Stable? What this election is about, it, this election is about the status quo and whether or not we get a third Obama term and whether or not uh, Hillary Clinton has the integrity to be Matt, the president of the United States. Matt, it's not about Matt, Donald Trump. This it's about is Hillary about Clinton. Do this election is about Donald Trump, and he is failing that referendum then we'll miserably. Uh, then we'll win. I don't know. No, you won't. I'm telling you guys, <laughs> I'm going to give you a chance to come back. 
So, all right. We're going to break. We have a lot more to discuss, including third party candidates. Plus, will more Bernie supporters get behind Trump? I'm going to talk to the one man who backed the socialists and now is in front of the Trump train. Don't go away. Eat smoking guy and Bill Weld, former governor of Massachusetts. And then you've got this Jill Stein. Now, when they when the candidates were tighter and, you know, 10 points, we all know that's going to change. It's August. And, and uh, you know, if Trump stays on message and Hillary stops lying, things might get better. Uh, but I think things are going to get worse for Hillary once this thing starts to penetrate the electorate. But what impact does it have one way or the other, the third party? Chris, uh, well, uh, if you're asking me, Chris, no. Yeah. You know, if you're asking me, I think, look, I think they take away equally from both of them. Uh, but I think right now they're at their high water mark, And I think their impact will dissipate throughout the election. Now, in a close swing state, it could make the difference. Uh, so it is something to watch. But it seems right now that even Gary Johnson kind of pulls. He pulls a little bit more from Donald Trump than Hillary Clinton. But he does pull from Hillary Clinton. And Jill Stein pulls directly from Hillary. OK. And Matt, your take? Yeah, well, you just got to look at the actual polls and the actual numbers. Jill Stein actually pulls from Hillary because she has a Bernie Sanders message, and those voters are having trouble still attaching themselves to Hillary. We're not talking about that enough. And actually, Gary Johnson's signature issue is dope, is drug legalization. And Donald Trump's pretty strong about the fact yeah. that he thinks drugs have a negative influence on society. So actually, the, if you look at all the polls, when all four candidates are there, Judge, it, Hillary Clinton always drops by more than a couple points. Well, yeah, and my sense is with Jill as the woman, the woman thing, and Donald is very, uh, Donald doesn't even drink. I mean, you know, and, and he doesn't you drink. Know, yeah. and that's not, it seems to me that the stronger they get, that there's going to be more concern for, uh, there's going to be more movement toward the third party, and there's more attention for them, clearly. You know, uh, let's talk about the ransom. Uh, are you bothered at all by what happened, Chris, with that, you know, the euros and the francs and the unmarked plane going? Going over to Iran? Well, we don't have a banking relationship with Iran, so we had to give them cash from other countries to make that deal. So we, we were in a situation where they had bought weapons from us in the 1970s. The International Court at The Hague was working through this, and it was going to happen. And now, look, Judge, I will be clear. I think that when there's a deal being made on a variety of subjects, everything could be put on the table, and perhaps that was too. But I don't know for sure that it was. And look, it looks fishy. If it was ransom, I have a problem with it. But I do think it was part of a bigger deal to settle that case along with a lot of other grievances with Iran, what? and that's what happens in negotiations. But, but go ahead, Matt. What was your take on that? It's just, look, it's criminal. It's so sad. It is destructive of everything we stand for as a society when we tell these folks that if you take one of our, our people hostages, that you won't be able to uh, blackmail us and ransom us. And Obama just makes us look weaker. Look, I root for the president in these circumstances, but he makes us look weaker. The next time Americans are taking a hostage, what are we going to say to that? The fact is, is this. This was criminal. Someone owes Ollie North and all those people who were dragged through the mud Mm, for what happened contract. during the Reagan yeah. administration. And let me I mean, finish. All they did apology. was send arms for let, hostages. Let me finish. An apology. <laughs> and the fact is, is this, which is, in these situations, the president has nothing but his integrity, and he's lost it on this because he's lying about what this actually you know, was. You know what bothers me here, guys? You know, on, on the one hand, uh, you know, the optics are bad. Clearly, the optics are bad. Chris, you're right about the fact that this was something that came out of the Hague, that there was that $400 million, you know, for the arms and all that. But what bothers me is that, you know, if this really was a ransom, and I truly believe that it was, and, and, and you know, you can't, you can't convince me otherwise, but the White House, the same White House that bartered for those Taliban guys in Gitmo for that deserter dirtbag Bo Bergdahl, okay, and went around Congress when they were, they shouldn't have, you know, the same White House had threatened the families of those guys who had their heads cut off that they could not negotiate for their loved ones or they'd be prosecuted. And that's what really bothers me. It's not just that they're making all Americans vulnerable, but that they also threatened uh, uh, those families who are trying to negotiate for a return of their loved ones. You know, they got a, a the double point. standard does the, not you know, work. But judge, yeah. judge, there was a broad multi-party international deal to stop Iran from getting a nuclear bomb. A lot of things were thrown into that deal, not just American things, but things from around the world, and so, including this piece in The Hague. And there was screaming and yelling by Matt no. and others when this was going we'll on see. about the hostages. Looks we'll like one they of the got reasons the Trump's going to win. All right, guys, got to go.
That slap, Chris. <laughs> you gotta get that in. Thanks so much. And next, he's a Democratic strategist, but he says Donald Trump is the man for president. So why isn't he backing Hillary? I'll ask him next. Trump insists he can swing Bernie Sanders voters into his camp, despite Bernie himself publicly backing Hillary Clinton. With me now is a Democratic strategist, Harlan Hill, now a Donald Trump supporter. All right, Harlan, good to have you on Justice. Yep. Now, I understand you are a registered Democrat. I am a registered Democrat, and I've worked for over 120 uh, campaign Senate races, congressional races all over the country. Uh, Democrats? Uh, all exclusively Democrats. I've never worked for a Republican or taken money from a Republican in my life. Okay, so now now you are on the Trump train. Why? 100%. Well, look, I, I was called a conspiracy theorist by, for, by the Democratic establishment for a long time by saying that the media and the DNC was directly colluding to advance Hillary Clinton and to suppress Bernie Sanders. And then what we saw in WikiLeaks is that now we have evidence that they actually were. They were conspiring to, you know, uh, undermine his, his faith and question whether or not he was an atheist. You know, they, they tried to strip the voter file away from him by manufacturing a data All right, so with the release of all these emails, you yeah. were right. I mean, your instincts were right. Yes. And now that Bernie's out of the race, Bernie is telling all of his followers to, you know, vote for Hillary. And as recently as today in the L.A. Times, not just at the convention, he's saying, if you believe in me, you know, you can't let Trump run. Judge, the reason we supported Bernie Sanders was not to support a good Democrat. We wanted somebody that was going to shake up and disrupt the Democratic establishment. He's being a good Democrat. He's being exactly what we didn't want him to be. We want a good American right now. I mean, these are desperate times. We're seeing ISIS, the threat of ISIS metastasize. The economy is precarious at best. And we need an advocate that's going to disrupt the ruling class in this country. And Bernie Sanders is getting in bed with it. Why did he do that? I, I don't know. I don't know what he was promised or, 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 or what. I, I cannot understand it. It runs in contrast to everything I know about Bernie Sanders and everything I know about Bernie Sanders supporters. It doesn't make sense to me, though I will fully acknowledge that a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters will vote for Hillary Clinton. But uh, we're not going to do so happily. All right. But the Bernie Sanders supporters are younger. They're millennials. OK, yeah. both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are older. So now we've got these third party candidates. You've got that weed pot smoking <laughs> Gary Johnson. And then you've got the woman, Jill Stein. You see third parties as, as entering into the, you know, discussion with the millennials. With, without question. I think Where do they go? So I, I think that some will stay home. Okay. I, I don't think that Hillary Clinton has the draw that Barack Obama did when he was running in 2008 and 2012. Not. Okay. Right. But so some of them are going to stay home. A lot of them are going to go to Jill Stein. I mean, I'm talking to a lot of friends that are saying, I'm giving Jill Stein a hard look. There's no way I'm voting for Hillary Clinton. And some of them will go to Gary Johnson. It's very telling that when you look at the polls, as many people go for, to Jer Gary Johnson's camp from Hillary's camp as, as Donald's camp. So the, it's going to be equally split between those two. I'm okay. convinced. Okay, so, so the millennials go to, to either one of them, but more the millennials, uh, well, the women will go to Jill? I think so. I, but I, look, okay. I, I wouldn't say that there's a gender divide there. You don't? Okay. No, I think that there all are just right. some... Bernie Sanders supporters are a monolithic organization. I mean, they're, they're not all socialists. All you right. Know, so. Out of time. Okay. Harlan right. Hill, thanks for being yes. with us. All right, we're going to be right back. That's it for us tonight. And don't forget, if you're looking for a great beach read for your summer vacation, and even if you're not going on vacation, pick up my book, He Killed Them All, Robert Durst and My Quest for Justice. It's on sale now. Go to Amazon. Go online. Go anywhere. Just buy it. It's a good book. It is. I wrote it. I even talked about it. I have an audio tape. They, they're telling me to keep going. Remember to friend me on Facebook. Follow me.